Before we get into today's video, I'd like to have a huge shout out and thank you to Thaddeus for suggesting this challenge in the comments. Thank you Thaddeus, it was a pretty fun run. Also, I just made a Discord for the channel and if you're interested in joining it, I'll have the link in the description below. Have fun watching the video. Most people who've played Fallout New Vegas know who Easy Pete is. They think of him as the local dynamite man who sits and does nothing all day in front of the saloon. But what if he just happened to take the place of the courier due to excessive brain damage? Can you beat Fallout New Vegas as Easy Pete? Let's go over the rules I set down for myself when I started the challenge. Number one, the only weapons I can use to kill things are dynamite, long fuse dynamite, and the 357 revolver. Two, I have to wear the same clothing as Easy Pete, unless it is removed forcibly from me or if I'm using a disguise for a mission. Three, my special stats will always be the same as Easy Pete's, except for when I use chems. My tag skills will reflect his too, but when I level up, I can place my skill points anywhere and I can get any perks I want. Okay, ready? Let's go. I wake up in Doc Mitchell's, name myself, and make the best version of Easy Pete that I could. Sorry, I don't get to put wrinkles on him. I mess around with the Vigor Tester and just throw my stats wherever because I have to change them with commands. I answer Doc Mitchell's questions for like the millionth time, pick explosive guns and sneak as my tag skills, then I'm free to leave. Now, the reason I have to change my special stats with commands is that Easy Pete has less special points than I originally did, so I have to lower them to fit in. This is what my special stats look like, and this is what my skills look like. Now I need to get my weapons and armor. I stop by Chet's and sell almost everything I have and buy a revolver HD cylinder for when I get my 357 revolver. Now I go into the saloon, talk to Sunny Smiles, and loot the place. The main item I acquired here is a free 357 revolver. That's one weapon down. Now, you might be wondering, where do I get these clothes? Hmm, I wonder, I wonder. Sadly, the real Easy Pete needed to die so I could take his place without the town knowing. Along with his clothing, he had two sticks of dynamite. Now I'm fully ready to take on the Wastelands, but first I need some experience. I decided to do the Ghost Town gunfight quest and help Ringo kill Joe Cobb. It was simple enough to convince everyone in town to help me in some form, except for Easy Pete. I took my dead body and chucked it in the back of this truck hoping that no one would notice. Now that the gang's all together, we attack the Powder Gangers. The first thing I notice is that people really try to get out of the way of your explosives, and the second was that the 357 wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. I leveled up, put my points on the guns, and took the heave ho perk so my dynamite would go really far. We're going to Prim, baby, and that's mainly for some dynamite considering convicts carry a crap load of it. There are some Powder Gangers along the way, and I also kill them for their dynamite. When we get to Prim, I kill the convicts outside of the casino, and this one over yonder attacked me, which is kind of unusual. Here's the pitch. Oh shit. Struck that boy out, I did. Johnson Nash had some dynamite for sale, then I decided to go back to Good Springs to make some ammo. I waited in my chair so I didn't throw off the locals, and remembered that I need more repair to make some ammo, and went back to the Bison Steve to kill those convicts. In a one-on-one -on -one fight, I can take out most enemies, but when there are a handful of them, it gets hard. I have like no damage threshold, so I take a lot of damage from everyone. The convicts put up a good fight, but they all eventually fell. I was going to kill Deputy Beagle, but decided against it because Easy Pete just ain't that kind of man. Once we were out, Beagle told me I needed to go to Novak through Nipton to inquire about Benny, so it was off to Novak. But first, I wanted to try to make ammo again, since I leveled up in the Bison Steve. I was still one point off on my repair, but I was hoping that Chet had cement hats. He didn't. I went to Johnson Nash, but he didn't have any either. I look through my inventory, and wouldn't you know it, I have a fix in things. Now I can make some 357 ammo. The way to Nipton is full of many threats. The first of them is some more Potter Gangers, who apparently hate me so much, they feel the need to tell me twice. Easy kills. Then there were some Bark Scorpions and a few Big Horners. Once I was at the Nipton gates, I saw Oliver Swanick. Now, Easy Pete likes to take it easy, but for some reason he just didn't like the look of this shady character. Without warning, he threw his dynamite and loaded his 357. The man never knew what hit him. Boxcars did, however. Now, time for some fun facts with Nick. Easy Pete doesn't really support the NCR, but he also hates the Legion and knows that they can't be allowed to win the fight against the NCR. He's actually one of the few characters to pronounce Caesar as Kaisar that doesn't have a faction status with him. Now that we know that, you'll understand why I killed all the Legion forces at Nipton. Oh god, did it suck, though. They all really like to dodge my dynamite sticks, and I suck at aiming the 357. After a while, they eventually died, but I was running low on stim packs. I cleared every single house in Nipton and proceeded on my way to Novak. The valley was full of Viper gang members and Bighorner. Guess which one of those I had a problem with? 
Yeah, it was the Bighorners. If they got too close, they could headbutt me and knock me down. Sometimes it would happen consecutively. I leveled up and chose Rapid Reload, and then I took on the Vipers. The top two were easy to take out, and then this one down here... How about I give you a little boom shakalaka? Ooh, yeah, baby. I got the skills. The rest of the way to Novak was filled with Vipers. Like, literally filled with them. I had to skip some of the fighting, or I'd probably die from lack of healing supplies. Eventually, I made it to Novak, torn and bloody. I ruined Cliff Briscoe's day by not buying any of his stupid dinosaur toys, and then I made the decision to not go to Repcon because I hate doing that quest, and it breaks my game. There were more Vipers on my way to the 188 trading post, who died rather quickly. Then it took a vast amount of time killing every single fire ant in the Mojave Wasteland, apparently. When I hit the 188 trading post, I could finally get my clothing and hat repaired. I talked to this asshole to buy some more ammo, and instead of going to the strip, I thought I'd hit Boulder City and kill some great cons. Jessup was confused I was alive and told me Benny was at the Topps Casino. Really, who would have guessed? I then killed Jessup for taking part in trying to kill me, and left to let the NCR do their work. There were plenty more Bighorner for me to kill on my way to the strip. I stopped at the crashed caravan and looted the combat armor from the corpses, and before I reached Freeside, I made sure to buy some more ammo from the Gunrunner's robot. Inside of Freeside, I went to Mick and Ralph's to see if they had any dynamite, but they didn't. I needed more dynamite because I didn't want to only use the 357 revolver, so I went back to Good Springs and waited in my chair until I was interrupted by Malcolm Holmes. I didn't even realize I picked up a Starcap, what a freaking stalker. In the morning I spoke to Chet and all he had was long fuse dynamite, which worked, but it also sucked a lot more than normal dynamite. Johnson Nash didn't have any either. I feel like I'm going around in circles with these two traders, never having anything. I needed more dynamite, and the best place to get it would probably be from the Powder Gangers. I spoke to Beagle and started the quest for a new sheriff. I wanted the one from the NCR Correctional Facility, mainly so I could kill the Powder Gangers for dynamite. When I reached the facility, Dawes put up a hell of a fight, as well as the convicts inside of the facility. I didn't get as much dynamite as I would have liked from them, but whatever. I looted the rest of the buildings and made off with a few more sticks of the explosive stuff. Eight to be exact. Back to Freeside. No monkey business this time. I head straight for the strip and gain entry. The first thing I wanted to do was get the platinum chip from Benny's cold dead hands, but I knew I wouldn't be able to take my 357 in with me, so I talked to the sneaky looking guy to see if he could help me, but I didn't have enough sneak. Well, I still wanted to kill Benny, so I went back to finishing the sheriff quest for Prim. I had to walk all the way from Prim to the Mojave Outpost. It wasn't too bad, as there were only ghouls and rad scorpions to deal with. Once inside of the outpost, I paid for Meyer's pardon and went back to Prim to tell him he's all cool now. That did exactly what I wanted, and I leveled up. I still didn't have enough base sneak to carry the 357 in the tops, but I had a loft and Toma I could use to bypass that. In the tops, smooth and easy, baby. Now all I had to do was get a good angle on Benny and see if I could get a few kills with my dynamite, and finish them off with my 357. It worked pretty well, but I didn't want to get shut up by the rest of the chairman. I took the platinum chip and left. Oh god, it's you, please don't hurt me anymore! Wait, wait, wrong, wrong challenge. The next step in my journey was to take the platinum chip to Mr. House and then leave because I just wanted the experience from the quest. You son of a... Yeah, how does that feel? Yeah, let's let's do it again. Yeah! Yeah! Okay, uh, I gotta reload because I'm actually going to work with the NCR this run. With that hopefully out of my system, I make my way to Ambassador Crocker. He tells me to go make contact with the boomers and see if they can back the NCR in the war. I agreed and went back to Good Springs to keep the townsfolk from wondering where Easy Pete had gone and to buy some dynamite from Chet. I stopped at Prim and got a motherload of dynamite from Johnson Nash as well. Now that I was getting into the harder parts of the game, I really felt like I needed more protection. So I went to the New Vegas Medical Clinic to see if I could get the implant that gives you more DT. It costs 8,000 caps, and I was about 2,000 short. I'd come back for it later. Now, here comes the fun part for me. I have to get through the bombardment of the boomers, and that's something I really suck at. I tried going over to the train tunnel to go through there, but it's locked with a very hard lock. So I tried doing what George suggested, and it worked. Sort of. I still got the absolute crap knocked out of me by explosions, but I made it intact at least. They escorted me in, and now I had to talk with Mother Pearl and do some quests for her followers so she'd be willing to support the NCR. I started with Raquel's quest to kill the ants, and headed for it post haste. This was a pretty easy quest for the most part. I just couldn't use my dynamite for fear of exploding the ants, who had apparently ingested gunpowder. They also just kept coming. Every time I thought I killed them all, there were more to take the places of the ones that died. They did eventually stop, and I was able to turn the power back on for Raquel. She thanked me by giving me nothing, and I was off to my next quest. I stopped at the medical building to see if I could help the patients, but I was really neglecting my medicine skills, so that was a no-go. 
Loyal needs some help though, and I wasn't capable of repairing the solar arrays, but I could salvage the parts I needed from Helios 1. I fast traveled to the El Dorado Dry Lake and was greeted by a lot more fire ants. Apparently I didn't kill them all last time. They didn't like my dynamite, and when the field was clear, I leveled up to 10 and put some skill points into melee weapons, which is useless on its own, but I needed it for the cowboy perk so my 357 would do more damage. I picked the here and now perk so I could finish putting the required points into melee weapons and started working on repair for the handloader perk so I could make better 357 rounds. The walk to Helios 1 wasn't too far away, and I arrived rather quickly. You think working for the NCR would give you access to the power plant, but that isn't so. They got quite mad when I tried to go in, and I had to load a save. Good thing there's a side door that I can lockpick, and once I'm in, no one questions why an old man in a farmhand outfit is there. It takes me a second to find the door that leads to the Helios solar array, but I find it and salvage all the parts I need to fix the boomer's array. I head back and fix all of the arrays and return to Loyal, and he praises me as being not totally worthless. At least someone does. Now I have to listen to this kid babble on about the boomer's history, and when he's done, I commend his people for being better than subpar savages. With this done, I can talk to Pearl and start the final quest I have to do for the boomers. Pearl sends me back to Loyal, and Loyal tells me he wants me to go to the lake and attach deployable ballast tanks to a sunken plane, and bring the plane up to the surface so they can work on making it fly again, because that's the boomer's dream. One long walk to the lake later, and I'm attaching the ballast tanks to the plane. It's really a simple quest when it comes down to it, and I return to Loyal and Pearl. Now that I'm done, I ask for boomer support in the war, and Pearl obliges. Back to the strip to talk to Crocker. Crocker tells me what a good boy I am and asks me to help settle down the violence between the Freeside folk and the NCR by removing Pacer, a member of the Kings from the picture, or just convincing the King to stop the violence. I'm not gonna lie, I hate the quest for the Kings, but I'm also trying to help the NCR in the nicest of ways possible since Easy Pete is a good man, so I decided to convince the King to stop hostilities. Oh god, what have I done? These are some of the worst quests in the game in my opinion, and now I'm making myself do all of them. It starts off with the king asking me to see what all the hubbubaloo is with the bodyguard Oris, who was apparently making a crap ton of caps with repeat customers, and the king smelled something fishy. And he was right. Oris was a ripoff, and he was faking attacks so the customers would come back for business. I also saved and decided to shoot these guys faking their death, and they were not very happy. Back to the king, he asked me to check on some of his friends that were attacked by mysterious figures in the night. Ugh. To the old Mormon fort, I guess. The king's friends were kinda dumber than a box of rocks, and were apparently attacked by NCR soldiers. I returned to the king and he asked me to talk to some of the NCR soldiers around Freeside, and go back to the Mormon base and talk to Julie Farkas. This is why I hate these quests, I was literally just at the fort, and now I had to go back and talk to Julie Farkas about the NCR soldiers. She pointed me out to one of her friends in the NCR, and then I had to find a soldier and take a test to get to the secret hideout where she was located. I totally nailed it the first time, like, I totally nailed it. Then I said the secret password and went in. Now I'm cutting the rest of this quest a little short because just writing about it makes me salty. Oh no, the NCR is giving food to his citizens but not to the squatters. But they totally sent someone to talk to the king about it and they got the crap beat out of them. The king had no idea and then a fight broke out between Pacer and the NCR. I went in and stifled the violence by telling them the king wanted to help with the relief effort. Yay, the king says I get one favor and I ask him to stop the violence against the NCR and he said he'll try. Jesus H. Christ, I'm glad that's done. Back to Crocker, he tells me that it's time for me to go to Hoover Dam and make contact with Colonel Moore for my next assignment. The way to the dam was completely devoid of enemies, and when I made it, I forgot to actually discover it so I could fast travel to it later. Oops. Inside of the dam, Moore's first quest for me was to get rid of the Great Cons. I'm pretty sure she wanted me to kill them, but Easy Pete just ain't that kind of man. So now I had to find a way to convince them to not support Caesar in the war, and to not get in the way of the NCR either. Great. Before I head out, I make a quick stop at Gunrunners for some more ammo, and then I set off for Red Rock Canyon. Holy crap, Private Ortega, are you okay? Is there anything I can help you with? Jeez, give me a second. There you go, good as new. This game is so broken. On the way to Red Rock, I discover the Fiends, and that's not the only thing. They have Cook Cook on their side, a unique quest NPC that likes to burn people to death. Good thing I killed a crap ton of those fire ants and have some atomic cocktails, so I barely take fire damage. Fire geckos, Bighorner, and Mantis oh my. Finally at Red Rock, I was kinda worried that I'd be shot on sight since I was vilified by them for killing Jessup, but that's not the case, I guess. Inside of the main lodge is Papa Khan, and he's not down to listen about how terrible Caesar is. Regis is though, and when I make my way out of the lodge, he's already outside and waiting to talk to me. Regis said that if I can convince the four other big members of the gang to stop supporting Caesar, that Papa Khan would listen to some reasoning. So I decided to start with Jack and Diane, as they were the closest pair of people. 
Jack didn't want anything to do with politics, but Diane said if I could prove that Caesar persecutes drug runners, she'd be convinced to oppose Caesar. Now I had to go all the way to Cottonwood Cove and find Anders, a drug runner that's been missing for some time. On the way, I saw some Legion members and decided to try and fight them. Three won't be that bad, right? Oh wait, what's that over there? Ah, crap. Yeah, that didn't really go very well. Uh, it's a good thing, too, because there were more Legion soldiers just up the hill. There were some feral trooper ghouls along the way, but that's about it. I made it to the outskirts of Cottonwood Cove and took Anders off his cross. He said thanks and made his way back to Red Rock. With that, I also returned to Red Rock and got the confirmation from Diane that she and Jack would oppose the Legion. Now I have to convince Melissa to oppose Caesar, which I thought wouldn't be too hard to do. How wrong I was. The way to Melissa had some Viper Gang members, which apparently had access to way better weapons and armor, because they kicked my ass. That's okay. I'll just avoid them by taking advantage of the old mechanic of Bethesda climbing. <laughs> uh, let's make sure nobody's following me. Oh, hell no, those are Cazadors. Oh, got a buff, got a buff. <sighs> okay, maybe I was a bit overdramatic. They were just young Cazadors, but still. At least that's the worst that can happen, right? I'll just make my way up the hill, and for the love of God, that's a Deathclaw. Yep, okay, that's not happening. Time for a good old Stealth Boy. And there's definitely way more Deathclaws than I first thought. Good thing I have the Stealth Boy. After carefully sneaking past the Death Claws, I was at the Great Con Camp. Melissa was incredibly easy to convince, and that's probably because she's surrounded by deadly predators. Back to Papacon. Now that Jack, Diane, Melissa, and Regis were on my side, it was easy to convince Papacon. Sort of. He wanted to know what they would do after the war, and suggested I went to the followers for some information about their past. Jesus. To the followers. Julie Farkas suggested that I find Ezekiel who was at 188 Trading Post, as he would know some of the history of the cons. When I arrived, Ezekiel talked my freaking ear off and handed me a book when I started to become annoyed with his voice. Back to Papa Khan. Again. With the book of his clan's history in his hands, he was finally ready to stop following Caesar's Legion. Wonderful news. Now I have to go back to the Hoover Dam. Wouldn't you know it, I forgot to discover it again. Great. Colonel Moore congratulated me and had another mission lined up already. I was to go to the Camorra Casino and figure out what the Emeritus were up to because apparently they were having some shady meetings for a while and she needed me to stop whatever they were up to. She told me to talk to the receptionist at the NCR embassy in New Vegas for some details about the Omertas. At the embassy, Lisa O'Malley tells me to call in a favor that the Omerta receptionist owes. When I arrive at the Gamora, she tells me that Kachina would be the man to talk to about what's going on at the casino. I ask around, but everybody in Gamora is an absolute asshole, so that's out of the question. I did find Kachina right after I started asking around. He was also an asshole, and said to leave him alone. Well, I didn't appreciate that, so I stole his journal immediately and made him cough up a hundred caps to get it back. Now he was more willing to work with me to uncover the shady side of the Omeritas. Apparently the Omeritas were illegally bringing weapons into the casino, and that's not good. Kachino told me to seek out Troik and Clandon, as they knew what was going on too. Clandon was an absolute waste of space and did nothing to help the quest progress, even though he's supposed to. Troik, on the other hand, would be more willing to help me if I bought out his contract from Big Sal, the leader of the Omeritas. So I did for 300 caps. Back to Troik, he told me the weapons were being stashed in a storage room in the basement, and that I could use his thermite that he was working on to destroy them. All I had to do was flip the light switch outside after everything was set, and we beat Golden Pony Boy. A quick walk to the basement and here we are. I placed the thermite and detonated. I'm pretty sure everyone heard that. Now I had to return to Kachino and figure out what to do next. Apparently, he wanted to kill his bosses and needed my help. Ah heck, I'm down, whatever. Big Sal and Nero didn't really put up a fight, and the quest was finished. Kachino promised to set the Omerita straight, and it was time to go back to the Hoover Dam. When I arrived, I finally made sure to discover the dam, and returned to Moore. She was pleased, and now she wants me to kill Mr. House. I honestly hate that if you don't join Mr. House, you have to kill him for any of the main factions. I actually like Mr. House, but whatever, I guess. I stopped by the Gunrunners to make a few cabs selling stuff, and then I finally stopped at the New Vegas Medical Clinic to get that subdermal implant, increasing my damage threshold by three. From there, I went to the Lucky 38 and opened the door that leads to Mr. House's antechamber. Yeah, that could have gone better. The easiest way I can think of to get past the Securitrons is a Stealth Boy. Well, unsurprisingly, I don't have one, but I do know where to get one. Yay! Repcon test site was the easiest place to get a Stealth Boy, so it was a shoe in Kill the ghouls, kill the ghouls, kill the ghouls. I entered the building and took the Stealth Boy right in the ground. I actually searched around for some more so I had a spare, but I literally didn't find any on the main floors of the building, and I'm not going into the basement to fight Nightkin. I left and went back to the Lucky 38. Now it would be incredibly easy to kill House. With House dead and no one the wiser that it was me, I left and fast traveled to the Hoover Dam. Moore now wants me to destroy the remnants of the Brotherhood of Steel in the area. Now let's get real for a second. 
In game, I'm a frail old man with some dynamite and a revolver. Why does she think I'm capable of killing one member of the Brotherhood of Steel, let alone like 20? I'll never get this game sometimes. The plan would be to have the Brotherhood join the NCR at the Battle of Hoover Dam, even though Moore forbade that, but the Brotherhood is my favorite faction, so I don't care, I'm saving them. On the way to Hidden Valley, I encountered some powder gangers and got to replenish my supply of dynamite a bit. When I entered the bunker in Hidden Valley, I was met by some Brotherhood Knights, and they made me take all of my clothes off so I could talk to the Elder. The Elder wanted me to deal with a pesky NCR trooper that was nearby, and he even put an explosive collar around my neck. What fun. There was nothing on the way to the trooper, and I know I could have tried talking to him to make him leave, but my speech was garbage, so I just dumped him, which I know I shouldn't have done because I'm working with the NCR, but I'm biased towards the Brotherhood. Sue me. When I returned, the Elder was pretty mad that I killed the trooper, but oh well. He took the collar off and had more missions for me to do. It's a funny thing, like, all of the Brotherhood quests in the game are based on threes. Three dead squads to find, three scouts to find, three different parts from vaults to find. Kinda weirds me out. Now, the game starts to take a turn into the more difficult territory. It's mainly because I do all of the Brotherhood quests, and they're definitely not made for easy peep. The first set of three things I must do is find the three missing Brotherhood squads. Pretty easy for the most part. The first one I go to is the squad located at the edge of the Boomer territory. They're dead, I assume from the Boomers, and the next stop is a squad right next to Black Mountain. They're dead too, I assume from Nightkin or Centaurs. This last squad is a bit more difficult for me, however. The squad located at Repcon HQ. The reason this area is hard is because there are so many locked doors around, and my science and lockpick skill haven't changed since I started the game. Lovely. So I tried something I didn't know you could do. I asked the tour robot for a guided tour of the place, and he opened one of the locked doors for me. Awesome. I gotta remember that one. Now that he opened the door, I could grab a keycard that would net me access to the second floor without getting killed. Once I'm on the second floor, I spend way too much time looking for the stairway to the third floor, but I find it after like 15 minutes. As soon as you enter the third floor, the squad is dead in the floor in front of you. Easy as pie, time to get back to the bunker. The Elder is disappointed that the squads are all dead, but gives me another mission anyways. The second set of threes I'd have to do is find three scouts and get their reports of their specific areas. The first one is right outside of the NCR Correctional Facility, so he's pretty easy to find. The next one was outside of Camp Forlorn Hope, and this one was guarded by freaking fire geckos, which do a crap ton of melee damage and kill me. Let's find an alternate route. And by that I mean let's get attacked by a Legion assassination party. Hooray! Yeah, these guys put up a hell of a fight, and I'm not gonna lie, I'm really not looking forward to the assault on the Hoover Dam. Once the assassins were dead, I continued onwards towards the outskirts of Camp Forlorn Hope, and eventually found the second scout. The third scout was right outside of Nipton, so this would be pretty easy. I killed a coyote for the first time in what feels like forever, and made contact with the third scout. Wonderful. Time to return to the Elder. What's that you say, Elder? Your air filtration systems are failing. And you want me, a frail old man, to go through the harsh Mojave and enter dangerous vaults to go find the things you need to fix it, instead of sending a group of your followers in armor that wouldn't make them look like a Brotherhood Knight to find it. Hell, sign me up, I'm ready. The third set of threes required me to go to different vaults of the area and find specific parts. This is the only Brotherhood quest I really hate doing. It's so time consuming. Speed round, let's go. Not too much to talk about when we're on our way to the first vault, Vault 11. It's filled with a crap ton of mantis and giant rats. It has three levels of just these two things, and it's easy enough to make it to the parts I need. The next vault deserves a little more depth. Vault 22 is full of mutant spore monsters and more mantis. It's a pretty big vault, and it's easy to get lost. The spore mutants do a solid chunk of damage and are quite capable of killing me if I'm not careful. I ended up having to go through a bunch of caves to find the parts I needed, but whatever. Anything for the Brotherhood. The final vault I had to go to was located at North Vegas Square, and was home to a crap ton of fiends. The fiends inside of the vault were well equipped, but were no match for my 357. I actually leveled up inside and finally got the hand loader perk so I could make some better ammo. I left post haste to Good Springs to make some 357 JFP ammo. Heck yeah, I was waiting on this one for hours. Back to the vault, I clear the rest of the fiends with ease, and loot the locker for the parts I need. Back to the Elder again. The Elder is ready to let his people back out into the wastes, but there's still one more mission to do. If I want the Brotherhood's help, I need to become a part of them, so now I have to do one last mission for the Elder, and it involves messing around with a council atop Black Mountain. Ah! Ah jeez, just let me attach this thing! Yeah, that went pretty well. Now I'm a member of the Brotherhood of Steel, and I can ask the Elder to help the NCR when the time comes. He agrees, and I leave to go take a tongue lashing from Moore, who is very unhappy that I got them to help. Almost at the home stretch. The last main quest I need to do is to stop the assassination attempt on President Kimball's life. 
This one always gives me trouble, and I usually just give up and let him die. But not this time. I steal a uniform from this locker and make my way to the Overlook where I can climb up the ladder and inspect the President's vertebrae. There are only two ways to do this. Either convince the guard to let you through, or be wearing an engineer outfit. Like this one I stole. Also, something I never knew, this fake engineer is the one who straps the bomb to Kimball's vertebrae. Huh. Once I remove the bomb, I talk to Ranger Grant, and now it's time to kill the sniper on the roof over there before the president gets attacked. Oh crap, he almost killed the president. Oh well, that's taken care of. I actually simplified this part, it took me like 40 minutes to do. Time for the second battle of Hoover Dam, and I'm not prepared for this at all. I go in with a little healing supplies, and the Legion soldiers are incredibly hard to deal with, because I don't have Psycho. The Legion makes pretty short work of my NCR and Brotherhood friends, and now it's just me. This was the part of the game where I just started running away, because honestly, screw it. Once I was outside, there were a few NCR troopers to help me, and they got me through most of it, but not nearly enough of it. More running like a wuss. I got to the little safe house in the middle of the bridge, and once I went back outside, I was greeted to a whole squad of NCR veteran rangers. Oh my god, I love you guys. They followed me into battle and did almost all of the work until I got to the doors of the Leggett's camp. They can't follow me in the camp, so I have to go it alone for this last part. It sucked. This was the hardest time I've ever had killing the Praetorian Guards, and the Legate was balls to the wall difficult to kill with just a 357. I tried dynamite, but all I have left is long fuse dynamite, so they all move out of the way before it explodes. I had one super stim pack to my name, and that was it. Needless to say, I died pretty badly and got incredibly frustrated. I took a break for a bit, and when I was ready, I loaded up my save from before I started the battle. I went everywhere I could to buy stim packs, and didn't stop until I was practically out of money. Now I had 46 stim packs and 18 super stims. Nice. I was ready to try again. Not much changed this time around, except I tried to put a little bit more work into killing the Legion soldiers. I leveled up for the last time and picked the fight the power perk so I could have a little bit more damage threshold. The NCR outside helped me once again, and on the other side of the bridge my brigade of badasses was waiting for me as well. The Legate's camp was so much easier this time. I made sure to pick up a few doses of Psycho and took them right at the start of the battle for the dam, so I had to hope they didn't wear off before I killed the Legget. Before the grand fight, I made sure to take every drug and food item I had so I'd be constantly healing slightly for the battle. It was a hard fought battle, and the Legget was tough. His soldiers were also annoying as hell and kept shooting me from a distance, as well as attacking me head on. The Legget did eventually fall, and I polished off the rest of his men. Holy crap, that sucked immensely. Definitely couldn't have done it without more stim packs. I go to the gate and get met by General Oliver who congratulates me on a job well done, and I beat Fallout New Vegas as Easy Pete. This challenge was much more difficult than I expected it to be, and it's mainly for two reasons. Easy Pete has the constitution of a wet paper bag, and the weapons he uses are a little subpar. Dynamite also becomes exceedingly more difficult to acquire the farther you get in the game, so relying on it doesn't get you very far. All in all, it was a fun challenge, but it definitely got a lot harder towards the end. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to subscribe and give it a like, as I'll have more content up soon. And until next time, stay safe out there, and peace out.